Broadcasting live worldwide. Thank you for tuning in to TalkLine Network Radio, America's longest-running Jewish broadcast network, the voice of the Jewish community. Check this out. And now... You're listening to Talk Line with Zev Brenner, America's premier Jewish broadcast on the air since 1981. Welcome back to the program, Mom. Zev Brenner with us right now is Lana Silver. She is the CEO of Sharsherith, the Jewish Breast and Ovarian Cancer Community. They were formed in November 2001. This is their 20th year of service to the Jewish community. So, Ilana, thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you so much for having me. It's really my pleasure to speak with you always and to your listeners. Uh, we have a lot of important information that I want to get out to everyone who's listening on the call today. So tell our audience, because you do amazing and very important work. Not everybody's familiar with the issues relating, to, and it's not just for women. We'll, we'll talk about that as well. But tell us about what Sharsherit has done, what it's doing. Okay, so first, for those of you who are not familiar with the Hebrew word sharsheret, sharsheret is the Hebrew word for chain. And what sharsheret does is we bring people together, we link them together to provide support and information, support that is improves lives and education that saves lives um, across the Jewish community as it relates to breast cancer, ovarian cancer, and other cancers that are related to breast and ovarian cancer because of genetic susceptibility. And we're bringing that all together and that every person that we touch, which are hundreds of thousands today, is a link in the chain and everyone comes together to support each other. I think what we're going through now, um, the need for people to come together, whether virtually in person um, through information or support, it really provides the strength that we're all craving and we all need right now. So tell us about some of the Jewish components, because obviously Jews have different kinds of genes and certain diseases that affect Jews more than other people. Let's look at the Jewish connection to breast cancer and ovarian cancer. Right. So that's the question we get. What's Jewish about breast cancer and ovarian cancer? And of course, everyone, regardless of your background, is affected by breast cancer and ovarian cancer. But what's unique about uh breast cancer and ovarian cancer when it comes to the Jewish community, the number one answer is Jewish genetics. One in 40 Jews of Ashkenazi descent, that's both men and women, carries a BRCA, a BRCA gene mutation. Uh, that's compared to one in 500 in the general population. So that means that if you are a woman who is carrying a BRCA gene mutation, your risk for breast cancer goes from about 12% all the way up to 85%. Wow. And for ovarian cancer, it could be up to 60, between 40 and 60%. Um, so that's huge. And if you are a man who carries a BRCA gene mutation, you have an increased risk for prostate cancer, pancreatic cancer, melanoma, um, and male breast cancer. So for men who carry this mutation, there are two things that they have to be concerned about. One is they can pass this on to their sons and daughters because it is hereditary genetic mutation. And for themselves, they are at increased risk for those cancers. So there are things they could do today to protect their future if they know that they have a genetic mutation. Um, increased surveillance, speaking to their doctors, because with these cancers, if you find them in their earlier stages, they can be treated, maybe they can be cured. And in some cases, especially when it comes to breast cancer and ovarian cancer, there are measures you can take to prevent the cancers. So we are talking about Jewish continuity as it's in terms of health, women's health and family's health. If we can stop this in its tracks, people will live and we will continue the Jewish people and with a healthier future. So that's the number one Jewish reason. In addition to that, those who reach out to Shersheret who are affected by breast cancer and ovarian cancer are very often people who are sick. And when you are sick, people search for spirituality and community within community. So Shersheret being run with understanding of what it's like to be a Jewish person going through breast cancer and ovarian cancer, we can help you grapple with the issues of where is God at this time or turning to God more at this time and understanding what it's like to be a Jewish person going through that. In addition to that, there are also Jewish 
rituals, while may not be tied to religious practice, but that are also very relevant. There are many women who are using the mikvah, the ritual bath, not necessarily for uh, family purity laws, but really for uh, renewal after chemotherapy and other religions don't provide that. Um, and then um, the concept of parenting and family is such an integral part of our value system. And very often when you're going through these cancers, breast and ovarian cancer, your fertility is compromised. And how do you reconcile that with the uh, value that's placed so much on family and parenting. Um, so these are all Jewish concepts that Sharon has trained social workers and a genetic counselor and community educators who, when you call Sharon and discuss these issues, you don't have to explain yourself, we understand. And it doesn't matter how your connection is to Judaism, we understand the whole gamut from those who are, um, who are ultra-Orthodox or Hasidic and to those who are uh, conservative, reformed, reconstructionist, um, modern Orthodox, Shersheret really understands the whole spectrum of Jewish identity um, and Jewish religious practice. Now, does this mean that you have rabbis or rabbinic advisors who help guide you with dealing with some of the spiritual issues that some of the people that come to Shersheret grapple with? So when it comes to halacha and to Jewish law, we recommend that you touch base with your specific spiritual leader, your rav or your rabbi. Sharsheret will present the issues and understand the issues you're grappling with from a psychosocial perspective. So for example, if you have um, someone who is concerned about tattooing for radiation, thinking that that's a halachic issue, we, we have resources on our website that people can touch base with, Nishmat and other places, and organizations that have rabbis that you can speak to. The same that goes with medical. We don't provide medical advice, but we give you the tools and the resources to get the answers that you need. And the issues don't have to be explained. That we understand. And then we help you walk through the implications of what you are hearing and what you are told. Now, you mentioned about community, and certainly that's one of the aspects, the Jewish aspects of dealing with cancer, breast cancer, ovarian cancer, etc. But there's also another factor because of the community, when God forbid somebody is afflicted with any of these cancers, people get together, they provide meals, another support system, which is a wonderful thing of our community. Yeah, I think that the Jewish community is known for that. And locally, I know in the communities, people go all out. There is a period of time when someone is newly diagnosed or finds out that they're carrying a genetic mutation where they want to remain anonymous and they want things to be confidential. And they're not just yet ready to go out into the community and share this information for many reasons. Um, and that's the perfect time to call Sharsharet, whether you or someone you know. Very often we get calls from family members or best friends, not necessarily from the person themselves who's been diagnosed because it's just too hard to make that call. But when you're dealing with a new with new information and you don't even know what the next steps and it's a whole new language, that's when Sharsharet is a critical resource to get you started. And once the community comes out in full force for you, then we're a terrific partner and can also work with the community to better support the person going through the cancer journey. Now, you mentioned genetics. Alana Silvers, I guess, the CEO of Sharsheret. You mentioned before that people who carry certain genes, their risk for cancer is, is tremendous. It could be as high as uh, 70 80% or higher. So it would, would, it, would it behoove us that we should have much better genetic testing so we could detect these genes much earlier on? Yeah, so first of all, I mentioned specifically BRCA because that's the most well-known in the community and has the greatest increased risk for cancer. There are other genetic mutations, I just want to put it out there, because sometimes a family will be tested and there'll be no BRCA, but there might be CHECK2, PALB2, ATM, and uh, genetic mutations associated with Lynch syndrome. So that could be an issue. Um, so just that it's not only BRCA. So if you're speaking to a doctor and you say your family has cancer and you say, but we tested negative for BRCA, that's not the end of the story. Um, but yes, what I think is very important that is everyone should be knowledgeable about the risk and that there should be access to genetic testing, better access. And what we're seeing now is that there's direct to consumer genetic testing, meaning you can get a spit vial and send it to um, a company. 
There are those that are doing it from an entertainment perspective, and that we don't encourage. We really encourage you to, if you are going to use uh, direct-to-consumer testing where you don't go to your doctor's office and a blood test and you're doing it, that you work with Shershared and work with a medical professional because the results are not just positive and negative like a pregnancy test. They're, they're not the end of the story. There's a whole um, legacy behind you, a whole pedigree that we work with you to understand what a negative um, result might mean and what a positive result might mean for you and your family. And again, as different from a pregnancy test that affects you and your nuclear family, genetic testing affects your broader family and communicating those results and understanding the implications. So yes, we need better access to genetic testing and sure, Sherrod can help you find that access so that it is not very expensive and that maybe your insurance will cover it and how to secure the testing if you want it. And we have gen we have information starting on college campuses to understanding your family history because that's the first step and then going from there. But from what I'm hearing, Alana, is that perhaps we in the Jewish community and maybe Sharshara can play a role is we should be for a whole, not just for breast and ovarian cancer, as you correctly point out, perhaps we should try to encourage people to take genetic tests. It should be more mandatory well, you can't force anybody to do anything, but it's just something which should be part of the conversation that people should early on, and I don't know how often they should take genetic testing to see if something comes up later, but this should be part of a routine of when one gets a medical checkup. This should be part of what we have to educate the public about. Yeah, and we also have to educate the medical professionals because there are primary care physicians. Most people don't go to an oncologist, and doesn't. Don't, and most people who mm -hmm. don't suspect cancer won't be in a cancer facility, but primary care physicians do have access to genetic testing if they understand it and if they share it with the with their patients at the right time. So we also want to educate. So if there are medical professionals on the line today who have not yet gone into genetic testing for cancer, you can talk to Sharshard and learn more about how to present it to patients when it's appropriate. Um, and we can talk with them. We do medical professional training. Um, and we can tell you how to do that and when to do it. So it is important for everyone to understand their risk and understand that it is an urgent concern in the Jewish community. We know that people who know their genetic status, it can save their lives. Certainly so important. Now, how has COVID affected the work that you're doing? So, so it's interesting when COVID hit back in March, um, the world shut down. Shersheret did not shut down. Shersheret's model for delivery of programs and services has always been virtual. We understand that the women that, and families that we serve are active and busy. These are women who are, um, who are working, women who are dating, women who are raising families. And the concept was they didn't have time to go to a support group or to a place to get information. So we've always been providing as technology um, has improved. We've had more opportunities, but email, phone, even through social media, um, online, any way the chat, online chat, any way that women and families can get information. So our services have always been virtual, which set us up perfectly for COVID because um, while our staff had to relocate, we no longer were working in the office and we had to figure that out. The programs themselves didn't stop. Um, and there was a lot of questions and there's a lot of long-term um, ramifications for everything shutting down because people were not able to go for their routine exams and people had to push off treatments. Um, and these are very scary things. So um, Shar sherrod has been sending out the message that now that things have reopened, it is safe to go to these medical centers. They are taking the precautions uh, to ensure safety against COVID and we are encouraging everybody to go to the doctor. During at the beginning of COVID, we encouraged telehealth, like people should trust it, people should do it. Um, and if doctors say it's safe to come in for treatment, don't push off your treatment. So COVID is going to have a long-term effect on cancer. According to the American Cancer Society, there's going to be an increase in people diagnosed at later stages when it's less um, effective, when treatments might be harder to take effect, which means that people could have more serious cancers or um, 
or people might die more because the diagnoses were pushed off. So we are really encouraging the message I'm getting out to everyone today is if you've pushed off your mammogram or you've pushed off your sonogram or your MRI or whatever your protocol is for testing, or even if you're just going for a regular checkup for a physical exam, you should be keeping your appointments. Do not push them off. It's really important. Totally concur. So here's a $64,000 question. The work that you're doing costs money. Who's funding you? Who's supporting the work of Sharsharit? So Sharsharit has an interesting um, re uh, revenue streams. We have one government grant from the CDC, which is not so large. Um, and most of our funding is coming from individual donors. So normally for an organization, our budget is four and a half million dollars. That's probably not the best model because you need to have thousands and thousands of donors to keep that going. But for us, every single donor is potentially someone who could benefit from our services. So a donor could be a client. So for us, at the end of the day, the more people that give to Sharsharit at whatever level, $18 or $18,000, will know somebody who's diagnosed with breast cancer or ovarian cancer, if not themselves, someone in their family, someone in in their community, someone at work. So we really do get a lot of our donations. Most of our donations come from individual donors and a lot of those come from events. We do fundraising events and there's always an educational piece in these events because like I said, this is a cause that's going to affect every single person who comes to any event, who listens to any radio show, who goes to any synagogue. This is an, an issue that everyone will face at some point in their lives and could turn to share share for support. So we rely on those funds, not only from a financial perspective, from an education and outreach perspective. And events have, have now morphed into virtual events. We do about 500 events a year, starting on college campuses and in communities. And in the last year, we did about 450 since COVID hit. And, but they're all virtual, uh, you know, obviously until it's safe to do so. It's still safe to meet together in person. We'll be providing them virtually. And that's how people are donating. That's how people are finding out about the information. And that's why people are calling for support and information. Ilana Silver, the CEO of Sharsheret, which is a Jewish breast and ovarian cancer community, been in that position for high years, 18 years to life, many more years to come. If people want to learn more, they want to donate or find out what Sharsheret is all about, how can people do so? Uh, well, our website is the first place, sharsheret.org. We are also on Facebook. We are on Instagram, Sharsheret1. We have our toll-free number is 866 Four seven four two seven seven four. I think it's Gosharsh. It might be for that. Um, and you can live chat us. You can call us. You can email us. It's info at sharsharit.org. And we also have events um, a few times a week. For example, we have a big fundraiser next Sunday night that has a lot. This is the first time we're having an all male committee with a male chair. It's a wine tasting event um, and a live auction of sports memorabilia next Sunday night, February 28th. It'll be um, a wine tasting featuring uh, managing director of Morgan Stanley, Bennett Schachter, will be speaking with Jeff Morgan from Covenant Winery. They'll also be giving everyone on the call a discount for their Pesach wine orders. Um, and it'll be an opportunity to hear from men in the community that have benefited from Shar Sharet. Um, and it's a virtual event and it will be taking place next Sunday night um, I think I think it might even be closed out at this point, but we have events throughout the year that we definitely encourage people to join. Um, and that could also be found on our website for a list of upcoming events from panel discussions to book clubs to um, video shows and things like that. Um, Starshared.org and check out upcoming events. Ilana, doing terrific work. Thank you for sharing that with our audience. Look forward to having you back again and much continued success. And thank you. And thank you for the good work you're doing. I know that COVID also has affected your industry and lots of people are listening and relying on you for uh, important mm -hmm. information, contact, 
content and um, maybe even entertainment. So um, really appreciate that you have expanded and included Sharshara in this really important medium during this really challenging time. And you pointed out something before that's so important. I saw research that I think as high as 80% of people have not gone to doctors during COVID. And that's, as you said, if one does not go to the doctor, it they risk all kinds of illnesses, including the treating cancer in an early stage. So it's so important that if there's one message that we get through on this broadcast is go to the doctor. Don't yeah. put it off. And also feel free to use Sure Share It. We are confidential. We are free. We are accessible. No questions too small. No questions too big. Contact us. We are eager and waiting for people to contact us. Let's give out the phone number two for the office. 866-474-2774. Thank you. We're going to be right back. Don't go away. Stay tuned. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thanks for listening. Talk Line Radio and TV with Zeb Brenner is just phenomenal. Everybody concerned about the Jewish community should listen and watch. He has the best guests. He asks the most interesting questions. He's always so well prepared. It's talk radio and television from a Jewish point of view at its very best. To advertise on the Talk Line Network and Talk Line's email and social media blasts reaching over 70,000 people, please call 212-769-1925, extension 100. That's 212-769-1925, extension 100. Or email info at talklinenetwork.com. Talkline Network Radio.